One thing about being in the desert, you never know what you're gonna come across. Hello there travelers and welcome to the Horror Green Book. I am your guy Brendan and today we are in Boulder City, Nevada to come to a museum, but not your typical museum. This museum is for the horror fans. Special effects master Tom Devlin has his own monster museum and today we're gonna go check it out. One thing I love about horror related businesses is the fact that you find cool stuff like this outside. I mean when you have a purse complete with casket on top got the creature from the Black Lagoon Lily monster on the front. I mean, this is a pretty sweet ride here, travelers. So, you know, I think we're in store for some fun. So let's come and check it out. You know you've reached the right place when you see the sign with Frankenstein's monster out front, along with a figure here. Also signage out front. And you have more vehicles. This particular hearse is filled with pumpkins. Pretty spooky, pretty cool. And over here, I think you guys recognize this particular beast. This is pretty awesome. And I love the whole worn look of it, you know? It just adds to the whole appeal. For all you fans of Cornhole, I mean, how could you not love this Children of the Cornhole? <laughs> this is pretty awesome right here. I mean, it makes me want to toss the bag around. Okay, we are now inside the Monster Museum. As you can see, it is wall to wall with cool, horror memorabilia. Everything you could possibly ask for. Of course you have merch. You have some zines. You know, a little bit of everything. And one of the fun things about this particular business is the fact that they change things up. So let's just say you come into town to visit, you know, it'll look one way, but by the time that you come back in town, you know, maybe a few months later, maybe the next year, it will be completely different. So, your experience is ever-changing. You gotta love that. The last time I was here, this wasn't built like this, but the fact that you have some arcade games. Primal Rage, that's a old school favorite. Oh, the iconic Mortal Kombat 2. I cannot tell you how many quarters I've spent in this particular machine in my entire lifetime. And we have the Mistress of the Dark herself, Elvira. I mean, this pinball here is, oh, so amazing every time I see it. I remember the first time I saw one of these as a kid. One thing I actually noticed about this Elvira pinball machine is that it's actually signed. It's pretty cool. Check out this Alice Cooper signed leather jacket here. It's pretty awesome. You know, I'm a Freddy Krueger fan, so his you no know, acting credit in Freddy's Dead is always one of those fun ones to look back on and see. Okay, as you step in, you see some very ominous items here on the table. They really make sure to give you plenty of detail. So, let's go through the Monster Museum. And 
One of the cool things that I love about the Monster Museum is the fact that they start with the entire history of horror. And here we're going into Elm Street. Like, I've wanted this particular cutout for the longest time, ever since I was a kid, seeing it in like mom and pop video stores. Here we have the man, Robert England. And, you know, you have the display. My man here. My all time favorite zombie movie, Return of the Living Dead. And it goes back to the man here. George Romero for revitalizing the zombie, of course. Hey, it's Lisa Wilcox. I love her. Part four, part five. So go on here, we have Maniac Cop. Love this schlocky film. I will be meeting the director later at Cult Classic Convention in Bastrop, Texas. Be on the lookout for that video. Ash here. Hey, they really do it up here. Chucky. And the man, Michael Myers. This is like, very, very cool. You guys know I love the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, so seeing Leatherface here and Grandpa. Be sure to check out those Texas Chainsaw Massacre videos that I have on the channel. If you haven't seen them, some good stuff. As we wander through here, it's creepy. Like the ambiance here is so awesome. Oh, Leslie Vernon. Great, great film. If you haven't seen Behind the Mask, and if you're a fan of slashers, definitely, definitely check it out, like, now. <laughs> it's, it's a good, good watch. Okay, as we come down this hallway, I'm going to give a little bit of a flash warning for the next couple of seconds, so just skip probably the next 20 seconds. All right, so if you guys have seen the movie Hunt, then this will really creep you out right there. Very cool. Oh man. The man in the mask. Like, I love the movie The Strangers. So, very, very cool to see. I'm interested to see how the remake will come out. Oh, here we go, Tommy and Jason. That's played by Corey Feldman. Saw him recently, and here we are in Camp Crystal Lake. We have some masks that are signed. I love that blue mask from part five with the blue chevrons. And there's one signed by Kane. For all the Friday the 13th fans at, let me know what you think. And this one right here, the spider gremlin from Gremlins 2. This thing was like so creepy as a kid seeing it. And now to like see it like in front of me like this is oh, mind blowing. Gotta love it. And this is the actual original rod puppet that was used in the film. And it's the only remaining one as the animatronic version was burned on set. I love how they've taken time to show love to all the different versions of Jason. You know, you have Uber Jason. You have a lot of people that love Uber Jason. Um, my problem... Uh, I would say my favorite Jason is probably from part seven, 
he just had a really cool look at that. You know, that was Kane's first time playing Jason. And then you have <laughs> Jason Takes Manhattan Jason. But one of the really cool details that they've included here is the boombox, <laughs> which Jason notoriously booted literally all across Times Square. <laughs> All right, and they're showing some love to Wes Craven, my man, with the scream section. We have a ghost face, and you know, how appropriate seeing that Scream 6 is on the way. We're, you know, we'll see what comes about with that particular entry into the series. Hopefully it's good. Uh-oh, now you know you're in trouble when you come across the Cenobites. We have the lament configuration here. He's holding it out to me. Should I? Should I? Should, uh, uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I, I know better. Not going there. And we have the chains coming from the roof. Showing love to Clive Barker. I'm in town for Days of the Dead Las Vegas. So the cast from um, the Hellraiser films. Um, from I know one and two and at least one person from Bloodlines will be there so I'm interested in seeing how that's gonna turn out oh my goodness now <laughs> the hills have eyes that one is one that will give you nightmares if you've you know if you've seen it or you haven't whoo is a doozy and you know it's one of the ones that you know the first one is infamous and the remake is in my opinion one of the few horror films that the remake got better we could debate about that in the comments if, if you want to discuss it you got any fans of michael berryman here he's such a sweet guy i mean for a guy who's you know, has the appearance as he does and has the roles that he has played before, you would expect him to be, you know, a bit scary. But the guy is totally, totally a stand-up guy. And total sweetheart. Here's to you, Michael. Now look at this guy here to protect his gold. Ugh. The Leprechaun movies are a trip. I mean, it's a pretty interesting series and then we have Mr. Pennywise hanging out in the sewers looking for children to devour speaking of clowns we have some killer clowns here love killer clowns from outer space and this you know is one of those things where the Kyoto brothers I'm looking forward to meeting them the Texas Frightmare Ghoulies oh this is like one of those titles that you know you saw the VHS covers if you are around the same age as me and you just wanted to check it out. I'm a huge fan of Ghoulies too. It, that's a fun, fun movie. And we have some screen used props here from different films. Um, Puppet Masters, I'm a huge Puppet Master fan. So we have a trunk from Toulon. <sighs> I mean, the things I would do to actually possess some of these. You got Blade and Pinhead. A fan favorite, Torch, Six Shooter. And we have a lot of stuff from, you know, Charles Band's company. Some stuff from, you know, all of those films. You know, so you know what you're getting in for. You know, you got some Ginger Dead Man. You know, Evil Bong stuff, Killjoy, all that 
goodness that you know that you're gonna find on Tubi or Amazon Prime. <laughs> but shout out to Charles Band and guys like Lloyd Kaufman that provide us with good schlock that we just know and love and we can't get enough of. Okay, travelers, I want to show you what I see. This is like really, really freaking me out. Check it out. Now, this is the view that I have with my sunglasses on. <laughs> um, these are just regular patrons, but they don't look like it now. So, I think maybe I should get out of here. I want to read a little bit over this so that you could know more about Tom Devlin. So, Tom Devlin's Hollywood career began with a dream job working on the X-Files and blockbuster films such as The Scorpion King with Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Red Dragon with Anthony Hopkins, and Terminator 3. But Tom's true passion was in the B-movie realm. What would appear to many that he was achieving his career goals in reverse order. Working for Lord Kaufman at Troma Entertainment and Charles Band at Full Moon were truly the dream he'd envisioned as a kid. Tom also worked on several mockbuster films for The Asylum and got to work with director Jim Wynorski, the director of The Return of Swamp Thing, which is a favorite of mine. I love Return of Swamp Thing on a Roger Corman production. So, if you're reading this, basically what this says is Tom Devlin has really lived the horror fan's dream. Especially if you're into special effects and creating things. I mean, the fact that, you know, this man was working on major Hollywood productions and what he really wanted to do was work with Lloyd Kaufman and Charles Band and Roger Corman. Now you can't necessarily see him too well, but if you could see him too well, he wouldn't be a xenomorph. But man, I'm telling you, seeing this creature here, man, you wouldn't want him coming at you full speed in the darkness. And on more of the science fiction realm, we have the Planet of the Apes. Get your filthy hands off of me. But you know, the reason why it's here is because it is an important part of special effects, for sure. Of course you gotta have some Toxie. Who doesn't love the Toxic Adventure? Now, it may not be for everyone, but you just gotta love this lovable guy here. Now, one more flashing light warning. So, fast forward, maybe another 20, 30 seconds. But I am wearing an Exorcist shirt, so it's only appropriate that you would see Reagan here. Ugh. Doesn't she look so creepy? Now you make sure to say nice things about my mom, Reagan. Don't be like that. And now we show love to the OGs. We have some Lun Cheney Jr. action here, portraying the wolf man. And we have the creature from the Black Lagoon. Very, very important monster in the history of special effects, mainly because the design was created by a woman. So a very, very important step in horror history with this iconic monster who still looks amazing all these years later. You got the man, just gotta say his name. I mean, you look, oh my gosh, those eyes. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you obviously cannot trust this guy. Herman and Eddie are here to greet us. Now say what you will about the Rob Zombies, the monsters, but it has exposed a lot of young kids to an awesome, awesome family who, I mean, even when I was a kid, I, you know, loved the Monsters and the Adams Family, but, you know, something about the Monsters was just so gravitating, you know, they were really underappreciated, but to see them, you know, receive some love nowadays is, is pretty cool. 
Now, if you're showing love to Lun Cheney Jr., then you absolutely must show love to Lon Cheney Sr. I mean, this dude here was so talented. I mean, you have the Phantom of the Opera, Hunchback of Notre Dame, and not only that, but you know, this dude was doing his own makeup. Like, that's so crazy. I mean, to think of an actor nowadays. I mean, okay, let's think of Tom Cruise nowadays. Could you imagine Tom Cruise doing his own makeup? His own stunts is one thing. Oh my gosh, this is so awesome. Like, I, I really need a display like this in my house. Like, if anyone has their own home theater, I mean, wouldn't this fit perfectly in there? Now, when you're talking about the real OGs, you have to go with Count Orlock here, which is basically bootleg Dracula because he wasn't authorized by the Stoker estate for this particular film. So they want to destroy every particular copy of the film. Thankfully, copies remained and we have this classic to look back on still to this day. They even have a movie theater in here if you want to sit and receive some education in regards to movie magic, movie makeup, and just the entire history of it. So, you know, you could get off your feet for a bit, unwind, and learn some stuff that you may not have known before. On here, you can't see the dark part of it, but they're showing documentaries all day. They're showing Making Apes, which is what's going on now. Elvira presents Don Post, which I've never seen. And I'll have to look for that. And Basil Gogos, I'm not sure exactly what that is, but I will have to do a quick Google search as well because if they're showing it here, then there has to be some sort of really good value to it. All right, so we're walking along the theater, and this takes us to the exit, which is very, very laid out nicely. Um, this has been a great, great time. They have it like a real theater with some candy here, cinema sideshow, and some more goodies here popcorn machine hey I got everything you need here to enjoy yourself watching some good B movies all right and when you exit you exit out of this facade here so that is the entire layout of the monster museum and as I said earlier you know you can look at this video but by the time that you come to check it out yourself it will look completely different so it is totally worth your time to check it out and not just one time multiple times and you see it is endorsed by celebrities here they have celebrities that have come and done signings here filled to the brim of super cool stuff well travelers Thank you so much for joining me here at Tom Devlin's Monster Museum here in Boulder City, Nevada. I just heard that Tom will actually be at Colt Classic Convention promoting his new film. So, I will be there as well. So I'm looking forward to actually meeting Tom for the first time, hopefully getting a chance to chat it up a bit about his new projects and his entire history with makeup and special effects. So. Join me for that. I'm pretty sure we'll have some good, good stuff for you on that particular video as well. So travelers, I'd like to thank you again. This is your guide, Brendan, with the Horror Green Book. Signing off. Remember, it is spooky in those streets, travelers. So let me know that you made it home safely.